All right, here's the Clash of the Commonwealth, point six, Western Kentucky University versus U of L. Now we're trying a new tactic, just for fun, and uh, Nick Nyman over there on the right side completely messes it up. He's like, I didn't get the memo that we were doing <laughs> something cool. I was clearly not paying attention during halftime. We were brainstorming awesome ideas for the second half. Uh, keep an eye on Western's team. Yep, here comes Louisville with a nine to one ball advantage. And group throw. Oh, Western hits the floor. Not a single player goes out. Beautiful, synchronized play there. But I'm so surprised that everyone went down at the same time. That was truly the biggest shock for me of that game. I wasn't in it at this point, but it looked really cool from the sidelines. <laughs> I'm glad. And uh, Louisville actually, uh, we'll go ahead and spoil it for you. Louisville actually wins this point. Uh, just re, just. <laughs> causing some uh, chaos here at the beginning. I think we already have about five players on the bench at this point, or in jail, I should say. Uh, so, good, great catch there by Jacob, number 55 of UofL. Great uh, hands in front of the camera by Jackass from E-Town. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's. I think we're already whittled down to less than ten players. Yeah, it looks like seven. I think we got it over there in, the, in jail. Yeah, about seven or eight in jail right now. And who was that that just went down? I don't know. I think I'm... I have no idea. I need my glasses. I'm old. This angle's farther away. Yeah. Because uh, for the longest time, it's me, Alex Heichelbeck, Matt Parsons, Jared McKinney, and a th one other person, maybe? Swanee, I think. If he hadn't already gone out. I'm not sure. I don't know. There's, so, there's too many points in this game. People, there's 11 points. Cut us a little slack. I do do a pretty cool over-the-top move here. I try to. Try to throw it over Heichelbeck's head. <laughs> so watch. Raymer. And... Hello? <laughs> I don't think I got anybody. <clears throat> I got like two kills this game. One on my Ben Subcheck. He got me the first point that I was in. Great catch there by Matt Parsons. Uh, so I was very happy to get Ben out. A little bit of payback. Yeah. It's always fun to get your friends out, too. True. Especially if they're fellow captains who... Who abandoned the team and, and moved to a different school. And dissented. Come on now. That's really bad. <laughs> but it's all right. We got another in-state rival because of it. So if we have to sacrifice one player to get a whole other team, yeah, I'll take it. And despite the fact that the guy working the scoreboard looked like he had things under control, the scoreboard is actually wrong at this point. Uh, those of you who watched the first half know that Western is up 5-0 at this point. And no, not 5-0 as in the police. As in five <laughs> points to zero, Felix. Oh, I saw you thinking about it over there. See, once again, we say, uh, you know, good job working the corners, and Zach Byrne goes down that group throw by Louisville. Great building blocks here for a solid next season. There's a timeout. And timeout number two. Um, ben, you were the only <laughs> captain that would use a timeout. <laughs> he, well, he realizes he has his best chance probably all game to, uh, to squeak a point here against Western. Uh, which, I mean, at this point, I was kind of hoping that they would win, you know, one point or two. I wasn't really worried about the game at this point. Uh, like I said, this was all for fun, and Ben yeah. knew that too, so it's not like we're insulting him by saying we knew we were going to beat UofL. Yeah. They, this was a learning experience. This was their baptism into the NCDA. Which is fine. I mean, every team needs um, an ass-whooping. I think that's a good way to put it, yeah. Uh, they don't need a Grand Valley style ass whooping like what we got our first year, the uh, epic sixteen to nothing loss <laughs> that uh, resulted in the um, dismantling of my team. <laughs> I carried over six players from the squad that faced uh, Grand Valley, and we actually only have one player left on the team that got to saw it, see that massacre, Mr. Tom Schatzinger. And Heichelbeck just totally punked that kid going yeah. for the ball. Nice job, eighty eight. It's because they know he's a great podcast host. They're not going to challenge him. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I like to tell myself. And like I said, um, Ben had about 18 players, um, 11 of his own. So more than half of the team that you see that he brought will be returning next year. Hopefully. Yeah, that's that's the hope. But they have 15 recruitment fairs or 16 or some, some ridiculous number. Like 13 so. recruitment fairs during the summer. So if they can't, all they have to do literally is get one player from each recruitment fair, and they've got five five players on their bench in a full starting fifteen. Um, and I never got to see the other alternate captain that Ben had uh, last semester, uh, the spring semester. His alternate captain uh, actually had to go out to California for a Disneyland internship. <laughs> 
but we'll be back in the fall and <laughs> order a jersey is just like sends Ben messages and chats him all the time about playing in the team. So Ben really has some solid alternate captains, and that's always the most important thing in my opinion because Felix, I'm pretty sure, despite adding you uh, at the beginning of um, my junior year, we've had a lot of turnover with that second alternate captain position. Definitely. First it was, uh, it was the first year. It was Matt Parsons. Yeah, Matt Parsons, I think. Then it was Ben Sobchak, and now it's Alex Heichelbeck. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think you've already got some people in mind for alternate captains next year. So I do. Very important for us to have kind of a strong, strong leadership at the top. And as we all know, leadership has its perks, as evidenced by the fact that I think one of us will have the cover of next year's WKU dodgeball calendar. Hopefully Felix, because God knows he's a ton more attractive than I am. <laughs> it's going to be a cool calendar. I'm serious about that, too. I really want to hey, make that a fundraiser. That will sell some. we got enough fans now at this point to sell at least five or six calendars. <laughs> we are a good-looking team. We are a good-looking team. Just check out, our, check out our billboard, which is still up, by the way, for the tournament that happened. Actually, it, was, it got taken down Friday. Did it really? Yeah. It's replaced with a Wendy's sign, though. You made me so sad. I'm right sorry. There. I'll give you a hug later. Okay, cool. And uh, you can see uh, Louisville's captain is extremely excited. I think it's down to, yeah, they just got Matt Parsons out. So I can see why they were jumping up and down. Um, got 55 over here rallying the troops. I think I went out and shot to the leg. Something kind of weak sauce. So. <laughs> Jeremy Kenny tries to make a catch and it hits the floor. So congrats to Louisville. They win their first ever point as an NCDA team. We'll see you guys back here for point number seven. <laughs>